we will explain the DC-DC converter as the basics of a switching power supplies. An AC-DC converter can be broadly divided into four blocks. 1. Input filter block. A switch element of switching power supply generates high frequency noise. An input filter block prevents this noise to return to the commercial power grid. At the same time, this block can reduce noise from the commercial power grid to the power supply. 2. Bridge rectifier. The commercial power supply, AC power supply, is rectified with the bridge rectifier. The voltage output from this block is converted into DC voltage. However, the voltage is affected by the input AC voltage and contains a ripple pulsating voltage. 3. DC-DC converter block. A DC-DC converter block converts the DC voltage rectified with the rectifier to the desired DC voltage. There are many topologies in accordance with the required specifications. 4. Feedback circuit. A feedback circuit monitors the output voltage and controls the switching time of the MOS FET on the primary side. From here, we will explain the DC-DC converter. There are many circuit systems, topologies, in the DC-DC converter, as shown in these figures. Here, a flyback converter and a forward converter will be explained. Each type of the DC-DC converter is mainly used according to the classification of power usage, as shown in the figure. For wattage up to 120 watts, a flyback converter is used. For wattage up to 500 watts, a forward converter is used. For wattage up to 1.6 kilowatts, a resonance half bridge converter is used. For wattage of 1 kilowatt or more, a full bridge converter is used. This table summarizes the characteristics of the DC-DC converters. With reference to this table, you can select circuit type, topology in accordance with the wattage and the required efficiency. This is a flyback converter. Since a transformer in this circuit serves as a choke coil, this circuit consists of fewer parts. Among the various circuit types, this circuit is suitable for a small wattage power supplies. Let's see how it works. When a MOS FET is turned on, the current flows through the primary side as shown in this figure, and energy is stored in the transformer. On the secondary side, the polarity on the dot end of the winding is positive. Therefore, the diode is reverse biased, and the current does not flow. When Q1 is turned off, the voltage polarity on the secondary side is reversed, and the energy stored in the transformer is released. Therefore, D1 is forward biased, and the energy released from the transformer is stored in CO through D1. This is a forward converter. Compared with the flyback converter, the number of parts increases. However, output is stable. This circuit is used for application from small to middle power supplies. Let's see how it works. The orientation of the transformer is different from that used in the flyback circuit. When the MOS FET on the primary side is turned on, the diode on the secondary side is turned on. The capacitor is charged through the choke coil. When Q1 is turned off, the energy stored in the transformer is released through the path indicated in blue. When the energy is released, the polarity of the voltage at positions NR and NP is reversed, therefore, the polarity on the side of non dot end is positive. Thus, the voltage generated at the winding ratio of the transformer is superimposed onto VDC of Q1. From this peak voltage, you will select the suitable MOS FET. The stored energy must be fully released through this path. On the secondary side, the energy stored in the choke coil, L1, charges CO with the freewheel current. The explanations of DC-DC converter are complete. Thank you for your attention.